Hello, Internet. My name is Daniel O'Brien, and welcome to another corny yet mesmerizing episode of Obsessive Pop Culture Disorder, the only show on the Internet where I get to try out the various accents I've been working on. Today's New Zealand episode works through... Nope. Oh, gremlins. I love Gremlins, but I have some issues, and now I'm going to talk about them. You've seen the show. Gremlins is a timeless Christmas movie about a small town that is overrun by gremlins, mischievous and surprisingly adaptive and intelligent monsters that no one seems to be bothered by. That's actually my first point. In the beginning of the movie, our protagonist's dad comes in contact with a mogwai, a new type of hairy goblin. He doesn't say, what the f is that? Which is what I or you would say. He says, oh, I've been looking everywhere for something like that for my son for Christmas. It's a present for my son for Christmas. It's exactly what I've been looking for and I've been everywhere. Which, first of all, hey, no, you weren't looking for this. Your son is a lonely bank employee with a broken car who lives at home. He doesn't need another pet. And you haven't been looking for a new creature you didn't even know existed until just now. Second of all, this is a singing monster who can occasionally imitate human words and is just like, this fits with the reality I've accepted. Can I buy this thinking singing monster of indeterminate origin for $200? That's $200. He eventually presents it to his son, our hero, Billy, who is like, cool, uh, this thing. No one is concerned that this is a species that doesn't exist in any book anywhere. It's so commonplace that when Billy shows it to his weird small child boy buddy, friend of the show, Corey Feldman, Corey doesn't give a shit. He sees the small cute goblin that has never been reported and is like, that's not a big deal. He's more into 3D glasses than a new species. It's incredible. Oh, he is me. Billy's father, his mom, his friend, and his old high school teacher all saw the new cute monster, and no one was like, that's a thing that doesn't exist, and we should talk about this. They were like, oh cool, a new alien. What are the rules of feeding it? Where did you get this? I hope he's housebroken. Don't ever feed him after midnight. If my friend showed me a new animal that I'd literally never seen before, and they said, it's a mogwai, but I call it gizmo, I'd be like, F off, gizmo, don't name it. This, what is this thing? We need to tell the government because there's a new thing all of a sudden that I haven't seen in any zoo, nature documentary, or animal book. Everyone is okay with Gizmo in this movie, but that's not even close to the weirdest thing. Title card! Let's look at the scene real quick. Firemen came and broke through the chimney top, and me and Mom were expecting them to pull out a dead cat or a bird. And instead, they pulled out my father. Phoebe Cates finally explains why she hates Christmas, and it's because her dad died around Christmas. Climbing down the chimney dressed as Santa, he slips and breaks his neck, and then stays in the chimney for uh, a little while, until they eventually find him, and she concludes this story about her dad disappearing on Christmas, and then turning up dead in the chimney with, and that's how I found out there's no Santa Claus. He slipped and broke his neck, died instantly. And that's how I found out there was no Santa Claus. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here, but I need to sidestep into some context that might eventually explain why I don't have a job here anymore if I'm ever fired in the future. I asked Jack O'Brien, founder of this website and my boss of a decade, if I could do an entire episode of OPCD on this one scene, and he was like, nah. And then I, in an attempt to compromise, asked if I could do an entire episode of OPCD on the movie Gremlins. And to that, he said, also no, because we only do one OPCD a month, and Gremlins is probably right on the edge of that bubble of things that the internet might care about, so I shouldn't waste an OPCD on a topic that a lot of people might not f with. And then I, in an attempt to not compromise, made the episode anyway, because I have some pretty deep issues with authority for which I have been previously reprimanded at this company in the past for, but I think at the end of the day, sometimes you just need to f talk about Gremlins. You understand? You get it. You're cool. You're on my side. All right, on to the thing. Phoebe Cates' Kate decides to share this story in the middle of a monster attack. This isn't like a brief moment of calm for them. They've been living in a town overrun by gremlins and the police can't help them. And we already know that the gremlins have a body count and are free and everywhere. And she's just like, this is as good a time as any. You're probably wondering why I hate Christmas. And it is weird for a person to hate Christmas. I mean, it's slightly weirder that Billy previously assumed it was a religious thing. I don't celebrate Christmas. What, are you Hindu or something? Being another religion doesn't mean you hate other religions' holidays, Billy. Get woke. But anyway, it is weird that she makes a big show out of hating Christmas. And maybe Billy was interested in that story before at some point, but telling it in the middle of a monster war is a really odd choice. Also, ineffective. Because when she's telling the story of her dad snapping his neck and getting trapped in a chimney, let's look at Billy. Me and Mom were, were decorating the tree, waiting for Dad to come home from work. A couple hours went by. Dad wasn't home. His mom called the office. No answer. Honey, he is not listening. You're pouring your heart out and he is actively checking phones for reception and like objectively half paying attention to you. You're like, my father, Santa Claus, and my innocence all died on the same day. And he's like, 
Mm hmm I hear, yeah. Uh, parents are the worst. My dad's n not home a lot, too. Do you- would you check for a phone or a light switch or something to hurt the monsters? Also, Kate, you're closer to the story is that's how I learned there's no such thing as Santa? What are you- are you trying to be cute? Hoping to get a laugh? Your dad's dead, and people are dying around you right this second. Save the cutesy NPR bullshit for your f***ing memoirs. The tiny green monsters have hacked into the streetlights. Double also, the story that occurs in the middle of running away from monsters never comes up again. It's never even discussed. Billy doesn't grab her and say, Oh, baby, there is a Santa, and he, it's, he's, it's me, I'm Santa, and I, and I know who's been naughty, and it's the gremlins, and so Santa's gonna f***ing kill, kill some gremlins, I guess, to bring some kind of poetic closure to your story. That doesn't happen. He doesn't even say, I'm really sorry about that. She tells this whole long story about her dad dying in a f***ing chimney on Christmas, and it never comes up again, ever. Finally, also, since we're talking about Kate, Phoebe Cates' character Kate, let's, uh... Jack was right, this episode is super off the rails. Kate has two jobs that we know of. She works with Billy at the bank and also works at the bar. Gremlins take over the town and literally everyone is either like, kill them or let's get out of here because their existence challenges the tenuous grasp on reality that I've previously had and I'm not yet ready to confront a world where monsters are real. Two great options. Kate, meanwhile, serves the gremlins at her bar. The gremlins show up and instead of saying, you don't have IDs and also most of you are naked and gross and none of you should be a thing, she pours them drinks and lights their cigarettes. I've bartended in a small town before. You cut people off when they get too crazy, and these monsters are shooting guns at each other. Also, the times when I served more to insufferable people were times when I anticipated a big tip. There is no way they're paying her at all, so she would like full-blown get fired after this. A bunch of naked gremlins and some hipster gremlins showed up, and I indiscriminately poured beer and liquor into all their glasses, and no, I didn't have a credit card on file, but they seemed trustworthy, hey? Bad judgment, you're gone. But here's another weird thing about Kate separate from the other weird things about Kate. When daylight approaches, all the gremlins go to a dark place to hide because light of any kind kills gremlins, a fact that is rarely exploited. And they choose a movie theater showing Snow White, a classic Christmas movie that theaters routinely replay at Christmas, whatever, f it. They're in the movie theater. And Billy and Kate go there. And Billy asks Kate, do you know where the boiler room is? Where's the boiler room? It's in the back of the theater. And she f***ing does. She knows that the boiler room for this movie theater is behind the screen and through a secret trap door in the floor. Not to turn this into the jobs I've had show, but my first job was a movie theater. I worked there for three years and I couldn't tell you where the boiler room was. I'm in senior management of my current job, which I've been doing for 10 years, and I don't know where the boiler room for our building is right now. How in the entire mother does Kate know where the hidden boiler room is for this movie theater? Meanwhile, when they go to the candy and sporting goods store, her only job is to find a light switch and all she manages to do is turn on a fountain. Gremlins hate lights, but they love water. How do you manage to remotely turn on a fountain? A fairly non-intuitive task, but you can't find a light switch. Have you checked uh, next to the door where all light switches have been since the beginning of time, Kate? What's your deal, Kate? Do you run this town or don't you? What else? What else? I rewatched this movie recently, and I completely forgot that Billy's father was a character. Like, when I thought about the movie, I thought about Billy and Phoebe Cates running around, and there was Gizmo and the bad gremlins, and Billy's mom being a fucking boss, webbing out gremlins like goddamn Captain America. But Billy's dad didn't make an imprint on me. But check this out. The movie opens and closes with his narration. That's me there on the corner. I'm an inventor. And I have a story to tell. The movie starts with Billy's dad being like, this is my story, strap in. But literally, he buys Gizmo from a child, gives it to his son Billy, and then he and his narration leave for the rest of the movie. That's it. He buys Gizmo in the beginning, and then shows up at the end of the movie after all of the gremlins have been murdered, and he has to give Gizmo back. And after Gizmo leaves, his narration pops back in to be like, anyway, that's my story. Well, that's the story. Man, you weren't even in this story. He was trying to sell a smokeless ashtray to a gas station attendant while the town was under attack. This is the Peltzer smokeless ashtray. We open and close with a narration of a guy who was the least involved in the actual plot of the movie. Apart from buying Gizmo, the father is the least important character in this whole film. At no point in the production of this film did someone say, Hey, this uh, weird noir inner monologue stuff is strange and not a tonal fit, and we never revisit it again throughout the movie, and maybe we should cut it? I know the answer to that question. No, no one ever said that. They kept it. They kept everything. They kept it all, baby. Even the weirder stuff, like... 
I'm gonna go to my grave knowing that this classic, amazing movie probably could have used a few more drafts at the screenplay stage. I miss all of the gremlin and gizmo stuff. There was a weird subplot about everyone in town struggling with the bank and losing money, and there was this horrible old woman who somehow ran the town and was making everyone poor. The bank and I have the same purpose in life, to make money, not to support a lot of deadbeats. It's a weird, it's a wonderful life reference that never bears any fruit. A bunch of people are struggling in the town making vague payments, and this old woman plus the bank don't seem to care. You'd think that by the end, someone would have figured out a way to make money off Gremlins and save the town, thereby giving the movie some kind of sense of closure on a problem that occupied the first third of the film, but nope. Also, completely separately, the woman has twice explicitly in this movie threatened to slowly and painfully murder Billy's dog. You'd better keep him behind locked doors because if I catch him, he's in for slow death. I'll take him to the kennel. They'll put him to sleep. It'll be quick and painless compared to what I could do to him. Maybe I'll put him in my spin dryer on high heat. That'd do it all right. And we're all fine with that because she somehow runs this town. It's never made clear what her power over the town is, but everyone owes her money and everyone fears her so much that she's allowed to openly get like rock lady hard about torturing a dog to death. She eventually gets brutally murdered by the gremlins, which I don't know, man. What am I supposed to, who am I rooting for at this point? She wants to murder dogs and she hates Christmas carolers, but like murder is wrong and the gremlins are bad. And I'd, I'd rather she learn a lesson than just get murdered, but like I don't even know where function in the movie was. To just be mean and die? She was just a powerful but miserable crone that made our hero's lives inconvenient until she was murdered by the bad guys. War is complicated and I'm wise for noticing that. Oh yeah. That's something that always sticks with me. Gremlins is ostensibly a horror movie. It's a bunch of monsters trying to lay waste to a town. In most monster movies, we're dealing with a supernatural thing, a super strong thing, and that's true of Gremlins because they're supernatural. But by the end of the movie, Stripe, the main bad gremlin, becomes a bigger threat when he picks up a gun. I love that. And I don't know why more horror movies haven't done the same thing. He's a scary monster, and our heroes are like, there's nothing scarier than that. And then he picks up a gun, and it's like, oh, f the monster's armed. And he's just, indiscriminately firing bullets. Jason, Freddy, the aliens, they never just pick up a pistol. It's such a natural next step for monsters that most movies completely ignore. He was a gremlin. He had sharp teeth. He ate human flesh. That was enough to be scary. And then suddenly, gun! And now it's just a standoff between an unarmed human and a sophisticated monster. I don't know why, but it's one of my favorite things that the final standoff isn't between human with human tools and monster with its innate monster ability, but it's a standoff that has nothing to do with our bad guy being a monster. It's like if the inevitable Harry and Voldemort standoff ended with Harry being like, but he didn't see this coming. And then he whips out a gun and Voldemort is like, but it's my one weakness. I'm sure there's a commentary on how guns are the real monster, but this is not the show to make that argument. I'm not even supposed to be talking about gremlins, so. Ah, <laughs> yes, I was ready for this. Put uh, some amount of time on the clock. Go. There's a struggling war veteran with PTSD who early in the film said gremlins were taking down our planes in the war. And then later when he sees a gremlin, he's like, it's one of the gremlins I was talking about from the war. That's the same gremlins brought down our planes in the big one. Big. That's right. World War II. So like, Confirmed, gremlins were working against America in the war, F gremlins. Next, Billy finds his science teacher dead and tells no one. Next. Seriously, he, he goes to the cops who don't believe him about the gremlins. He doesn't even try to say, don't believe me. There's a dead science teacher up at the school right now. Speaking of cops, hey, it's Mike from Breaking Bad. Next. What are the, uh, rules of that car. I'm not trying to be a dick, but like, how are you driving that? Does the car that fits you have a functioning gas and brake system? If so, why? Never mind. Here's another thing. <laughs> I'm not sure what you thought you were doing with that wrench in the boiler room, but you did it wrong. That's not the direction you want to wrench stuff for the outcome you were hoping for, Billy. Since Billy, hey Billy, since we're talking, I have a lot to say about your sexuality. And I think you've, ah, <laughs> Okay, that's all for now. Join us next time when our topic will be Gremlins 2. Oh boy! Really trying to get fired, I guess. Okay. Bye. Hey everyone, thank you for watching that obsessive pop culture disorder about Gremlins and yeah, it was made before Jack announced that he was leaving, so that's why that's weird. Anyway, if you like the show, um, we're doing another show called Excessive Pop Culture Discussion, where it's me and a couple of these 
clowns talking about pop culture. If you like OPCD, you'll love EPCD. So check it out. <laughs> Obviously someone made me do this. 